Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Kid Icarus Uprising in the last episode. We stormed Palutena's temple with the intention of defeating her, stopping what she had become, and saving the world. However, we learned very quickly that she was being controlled by an entity known as the Chaos Kin, who was being held in Arlon's Lunar Sanctum. In this episode, we're heading into the Chaos Vortex to pursue the Chaos Kin and get Palutena's soul back. Before we head out, we need to equip ourselves, of course. Now, as we're heading into the Arms Altar, I just want to say a few things. First of all, I'm aware of the uh, Meteor Bow, Darkness Bow mix-up that I did when I was describing uh, Pitt's body, as well as the weapon that I used in Chapter 19. Thing is, I meant to say Darkness Bow in that recording, I accidentally said Meteor Bow, and I went to record that immediately after I edited that, so the words Meteor Bow were fresh in my mind, so I figured it had to be that, so... Um, mostly my fault. The reason why I say mostly not entirely is the fact that the Darkness Bow does look a little different when Pitt's body uses it, especially the shots, so I think that could have just been why I got it mixed up in the recording, so that's kind of why that is, at least as far as I know. Um, I think I'm gonna go use the Viridi Palm. Viridi's been very helpful to us, and even though I'm not entirely too keen on this weapon, how it looks when you fight with it, I think I can do it. Just saying, you're gonna want a weapon that you're at least decently good with with melee attacks for this chapter, so I might be a little bit boned here using a palm, but oh well. Um, I know that there's the super special awesome thing at the beginning of each video, but I'll be honest, I've already talked about every little thing that I want to talk about before a chapter at this point. Everything that I want to talk about that is not gonna get its own special video at the end. Um, I have plans to cover the multiplayer, I have plans to cover conversations we haven't seen yet, I have plans to show powers we haven't seen yet, I have plans to go over some choice weapons that I just don't get to show, things like that. And for that reason, I think that we're just going to get right into the action from every episode from here on out. Uh, there is no intensity gate here, playing on 5.8, let's move out! Let's go save Palutena! Hold on, Lady Palutena! I'm coming for you! Dark Pit is going up ahead. Welcome to the Chaos Vortex, where Pandora's Labyrinth of Deceit seems sane. Everything is upside down, flipped up and down and all around. Yes means no. Welcome to Moonside. Yeah, it's that wacky. <laughs> yes, well, I'm sorry, Dark Pit. I wasn't expecting that. I'll admit, those eyes, oh boy, those things really, really scared the living lemon pudding out of me. Wow, that sounded like I wet myself. But either way, it really, really freaking scared me the first time that I played Kid Icarus Uprising, and I can't say enough that it's really, really something that legitimately scares me. Uh, these hands, they can actually hurt you, as you saw right there. I recommend not shooting and just dodging out of the way, because there's not very many enemies. Speaking of enemies, the Chaos Kin is making copies of various enemies that we've already faced. This includes the Underworld Army, the Forces of Nature, Palutena's Army, and even the Aram. It does not include the Space Pirates, oddly. But you're going to have to get used to fighting enemies together in combinations that you've never fought before, which can get really, really dumb. I'll say that much. Like, right here we have Forces of Nature and Palutena's army both targeting us, which is something new. Good! There's a way out! Oh, man! This is my only tunic! Don't be such a princess! Oh, yeah! It's a hot spring! <laughs> hey, you've got your color back! I also got water up my nose. Get out of my way! I said get out of my way! Viridi, you missed your opportunity to be like, your in-flight hot spring will be arriving in three, two, one, or something like that. I mean, come on, Viridi can totally play the airline steward as Palutena did it a few times, and you know what they say, anything Palutena can do, Viridi can do better. You know, in her own words. We got Chaos Kin lookalikes up here. These are the first Chaos faction enemies that we're going to be fighting aside from the Chaos Kin itself. They drop a little bit of hearts. They're not really all that lucrative to fight, but hey, there's lots of them, so keep the heat on them before they get to attack you. That's pretty much it. One thing that I've always wondered is, are all these ruins that are just floating around here just pieces of Palutena's temple? Because the temple's all beat up and there's chunks of stone missing, there's pillars missing, there's all kinds of things like that. And I just have kind of always wondered if these are meant to be chunks of Palutena's temple that just got dragged back to the Chaos Vortex. And of course, what pseudo Palutena's temple would be complete without pseudo pits? Seriously? Now what? They seem to be your shadows. What? They don't look anything like me. First of all, I'm much more attractive. Honestly, it's like you want me to insult you. No, you just do it anyway. That Chaos King's the real deal! After it! Right! Where do you think you're going? Throttling up! My 
my face feels like it's blowing off! Put on your big boy pants and stay on the chaos pit! Even if Aridi fails to remember that Pit doesn't even wear pants, we will do just that! We stop the chaos in here, we save Palutena's soul, we restore peace to Sky World, we get back to fighting the Underworld Army, and take on Hades! And the Chaos Kin has an oddly large collection of exotanks in the sky. I am quite jealous. I want a flying exotank, dammit. Maybe we can also get one of those if we end up defeating it. That's gotta be helpful in defeating Hades, right? Well, as we're heading through here, we got lots and lots of spires that look a lot like the Reaper's line of sight. It seems to have a thing for collecting bits and pieces of areas that we've been to. And to think, everything that's happened here could have been avoided if Arlon was just not so reserved in telling us what the details of the Lunar Sanctum were. Of course, those details are highly confidential. I cannot tell you without Mistress Veridi's consent. And my impression of Arlon is almost as bad as Pitt's impressions. Man, when you guys said that I was a lot like Pitt, you guys weren't kidding. But as Veridi helps us stay in flight as long as possible, just keep the heat on the Chaos Kin, and eventually... Can weaken it just enough. Come on! Not much more. You can use your special attacks if you need to get rid of other enemies that are distracting you from hitting it. Let's do it! Come on! Lady Palutena's spirit back! Unfortunately, we're not as close to accomplishing that goal as you might think. We have a long, long winding road ahead of us. And by long, long winding road, I mean very small circular platform. But it's a very long way to the Chaos Kid, believe me. Where's Lady Palutena? She's close by, but you'll have to finish off some enemies first. My pleasure! These are all enemies that you've seen before, but never together like this! It is weird. I have a hunch that the Chaos King is created. Oh man, don't tell me there's like an endless supply of them. No, I don't think that's possible. Even though these enemies are knockoffs, they're real enough to hurt you. So I'm sure they require quite a bit of energy to create. Which means this will be an endurance contest between you and the Chaos King. Oh, don't you worry. I can outlast any evil mob. So. If you haven't guessed, we're going to have an endurance run of enemies here. It's just going to be wave after wave. Think of it like uh, the RM brain minus being pulled by Centurion strong arms. And honestly, I don't have an issue with that. I don't like escorting stuff. I don't like having to defend the Centurion strong arms. So I'm kind of okay with this. But as for the weapon that I'm using for this chapter, we have the Viridi Palm. Yeah, it shoots hearts. Very, very manly. Uh, I like Viridi too much to never use this weapon. But going into what it does, the further away you are, the more homing ability your shots gain. It's also very sensitive in doing more damage depending on where your shots hit. Typically, if an enemy has a head, that is where you want to shoot. We went over this in the Reaper's line of sight, so I don't think I need to say anything more about that. So that's what we got here for a weapon. Uh, this treasure chest, watch what it does. Yeah, isn't that great? It's an Orn. As much as I usually complain about Orns being kind of jerkishly placed, this one really isn't. It just kind of stays in the middle of all those Resdas and doesn't really do anything to you. It just kind of sits there. Honestly, the monoliths and the, the Handoras are the bigger threat to you here, as odd as that sounds. You just take out all the enemies besides the Orn and it will cause it to disappear. Same goes for the monoliths. By the way, just saying, I don't think monoliths are soft. Those armed troops are doing their best gaming watch impression. Check out the gaming IQ on this guy. You're a regular video game historian. But enough nerdery for now. This place is crawling with cacods. Why did you create an enemy that annoying in the first place? You can thank the Chaos Kid for this match. Don't blame me. Veridi, stop trying to cover your butt on this one. He was complaining about the fact that you created the enemy, which you did. He wasn't complaining about this particular batch made by the Chaos Kid. I just guess he didn't have a really good opportunity to ask you earlier, aside from, well, all the other chapters you were in together and all the time spends at your domain. But that's not the point. What the point is, is that we have lots of enemies that we have yet to see in combinations like this. The Orns being blocked by the Resdas were a good example of this. These Belunkas with Screedles around aren't really all that different from times that you fight them on just the Underworld side. But that's kind of the gimmick of this area, is the fact that we have lots of enemies that we've seen before, but in combinations that we've never seen before. It makes for some interesting battles, but of course there still are just enemies that you've seen before, so you should already know how to take them apart, and I shouldn't need to talk to you about that. So what I'd like to talk to you about instead is the fact that this arena has a few things about it. Obviously there's rocks for you to hide behind, but it also has jump pads. These will launch you clear across the arena and are a quick way for you to get away from attacks if you see one incoming and just don't think that you can dodge out of the way of it, or there's just too many attacks for you to dodge. It is very helpful to remember this and to keep note of where these jump pads are in your mind. The fifth wave is here! Come on now! This is getting ridiculous! Shoot that 
futon before it steals anything from you. No, wait! Don't shoot! The shoe flies will react to your fire. Which is it? Shoot or don't shoot? Um, melee! Melee like crazy! Melee till the cows come home! Melee till the cows come home. Sounds like the motto of some kind of Smash Brothers competitive group. I don't know, it probably is to be honest. So you want to use melee attacks on these Plutons. It is not the easiest thing in the world to do, especially with a palm, which is why I recommended that you have a good melee weapon for this. I didn't really follow my own advice all that much, so I'm suffering a little bit here, but I think I'm going to be fine, to be perfectly honest with you. Wave six! Wait, that's a Stomper and Bumpity Bomb, eh? Come up with those names yourself? Are you getting smart with me? No, I'm just curious. Because I did come up with those names myself. Aren't they just the cutest? Right. Cute. Bumpity Bomb. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything so adorable? I gotta say, I feel very good that they agree with me that Veridi has the best enemy names ever, and the fact that she came up with those enemy names herself just earns her so much more respect in my books. So, once again, very, very strange enemy combinations here, and while these RM troops aren't really all that unusual, at least not those aren't, oh, this one! We have Coils, Monoliths, a Shildeen, and Sirens. This one can be really, really mean. You gotta get to that Shildeen there to take out the shield. However, you have unstoppable monoliths that are rotating around it. You have that siren that's going to shoot wind at you. You have coils that are just infinitely spawning in from inside there. And it's just all really, really annoying. Luckily, they're kind enough to give you enough food. It's just a few underworld tomatoes and another orn. Oh, no! This could spell trouble. Stay away from the orn and keep taking out the tomatoes. You know, tomatoes look an awful lot like little metroids. No! Stop right there! What's the matter? All I said was that tomatoes look like little metro. <laughs> I can't hear you. Hey, what's your problem? This game universe and that game universe have nothing to do with each other. So don't go around spreading rumors. <laughs> nothing to do with each other, huh? Except being on the, based on the same game engine, every game in the series up until this one. Having space pirates, having arm cannon weapons. Okay, now let's get on with it. After we have yet another loading screen mid-chapter. Looks like you could use a little help. I can do this myself. And why are you suddenly so interested in helping me anyway? While you were a ring, I was less than nothing. Unconscious, un- myself. We're connected. No you, no me. Two sides of the same. That's crazy. So that's why you have to help me save Lady Palutena. Okay then, let's, let's take these enemies down. That goes without saying. So the Chaos Kin is copying Aurum enemies that are copies of the forces of nature. It makes you think, doesn't it? No, not really. It's just weird. Ah, oh, it's ridiculous how long this took to happen. Pit and Dark Pit finally working together for the first time since Pandora. It feels so good. So, Dark Pit. He fights alongside you, and he's pretty good at fighting most enemies. He's not really the greatest at shooting at what you want him to shoot at, and he's pretty bad at fighting underworld crawlers, but aside from that, he's pretty helpful. Only thing is, if you fire at him, he will shoot back at you to be a jerk. I know that he's got an attitude, but why is it in his best interest to be a jerk back to us? He just got done saying, no, you, no me. And I have had plenty of times where a stray bullet from my continuous fire hit him, and he returned back with a charge shot that killed me. Effectively killing himself, so I don't get it. I don't know why it's in his best interest to do that, and it gets kind of annoying. He has a silver bow as always, so you know what his attacks are, if you, you know that weapon, and... Oh, Igneons! Okay, you want to get behind these rocks and fight them from back here. Whenever they're about to fire, just get behind the rocks. Don't worry. Just be patient, and you should be fine. Alright, let's relax. My panic attack for the 14th minute of this video is over. We have a little tiny bit to go before my panic attack for the 15th minute, and I think Dark Pit just shot me right there. Okay, let's, uh, let's be careful here. Let's not overdo it. Okay, we got rid of the monolith right there by taking out the enemy that was around it. So, I want to get out of the way! No, 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 no! Okay, that was my first really, really bad hit so far, as far as I know. So, even though I'm having to play on 5.8, still, it's just... Oh, come on, Dark Pit! Stop hitting me! Stop! Really? Okay. Let's do better this time. Okay, take him out. He's taking care of that Igniot over there. I want to get behind this rock so that I can take it from behind pretty easily. It's not facing me. Take it from behind. 
it's okay. As soon as it faced me, it went out. Wave 12! 12! Oh, I think we're getting close to the end. You keep saying that, but the enemies keep coming. Bickering won't help us. If we want to defeat evil, we have to unite as good. No, if we want to defeat evil, we have to unite against platitudes. Because I love you guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have no idea what the heck a platitude even is. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it has something to do with propaganda. We will see if I'm correct on screen right now. But we got a trinamite right here that you want to avoid shooting. You will have stray bullets occasionally hit it, and yeah, they will come after you by counterattacking you. They endlessly spawn during this phase from the top of the cast vortex, so just avoid the trinamites and take out these guys. And actually, as soon as I said that they infinitely spawn, I think they actually stop there. So never mind, they don't. So, you just want to focus on these weak spots in the bellies, obviously, like always, they just keep bouncing around, they don't roll around, so we have enemies that act differently from how they normally do, too, I suppose. I gotta say, they look kind of creepy, like, they look kind of cute, like, with their eyes poking out, even though I can't stand these enemies, but they actually look kind of creepy that way, like, they're motionless and just bouncing around, and, ugh, I don't like it. Let's get rid of the shell, though. Okay, good. We're at the 13th wave. I'm sure this is it. Then it's time. Time for what? A pre-boss battle rallying cry! Oh, right. Okay. <clears throat> Milk of the land, hear our words! And see our actions! I am Pit, servant of the goddess of light! And I am Dark Pit, servant to no other but myself! Together we will rain death upon you! So anyone who wants to die, step right up! And anyone who doesn't want to die, too bad! Oh yeah! Nice speech, guys. Did you stay up all night writing it? Or maybe it's your super secret twin connection, Tommy. It is so lame, but so awesome. It embodies the character of Pit just so greatly. All right. So, Mega Laser on this doze up here. We just need to keep on it, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Has loads of health and Dark Pit! What the? Hey! Maybe it's just my shot homing or something like that that's making him think that I'm trying to attack him when I'm not. In oh, Blader! Blader! Uh oh, I'm kind of worried here. Uh, okay, so we got rid of him. Uh, we'll have Dark Pit focus on the snowman while I am repeatedly attacking this doze. Uh, this is fun, right? I'm just repeatedly shooting hearts at the doze. Yeah, exciting. Uh-huh. And Dark Pit just shoot at me again. <sighs> Freaking Dark Pit. What? He was just standing there. He wasn't even doing anything. If anything, he ran towards me. I... Okay, at least we're done with that. After this point, Dark Pit actually becomes a lot more helpful and he's a lot less likely to attack you. Well, look who decided to show up. It's game over, Chaos Kin. Here, let me help. There, that should make things easier for you too. Thanks, Faridi. You're always thinking. Thank. I set up an electro trap in the center of the field. It'll come in handy if you're having trouble keeping up with the Chaos Kin. Just like I said, you're always thinking. Well, one of us has to. At long last, we fight the Chaos Kin one on one. Well, actually, two on one because we got Dark Pit. Awesome. So, that loading screen back there was saying that the Forces of Nature's trademark is a single yellow eye. Some people believe that the Chaos Kin might have been created by the Forces of Nature, but certainly explain how Viridi had it and had imprisoned it. Could just be that it got wildly out of control. As for the Electro Trap, you want to keep distance between the Chaos Kin and yourself so it'll dash at you and get caught in it. You get off loads of free damage in it while it's trapped in there. Let's just try to imprison the Chaos Kin and save Palutena! You'll pay for what you've done, Chaos Kin! Leading souls is bad enough. Going after the soul of a goddess is just vile. Palutena resisted being consumed for over three years. We have to hand it to her. That takes a certain strength of will. She was waiting for you to return, Pit. I'm sure she used every last ounce of her power to resist. She must have suffered so much. There's no point dwelling on this now. We need to take down the Chaos Kin. You're right. Just makes you want to beat the crap out of the Chaos Kin even more when you hear that. The Chaos Kin itself could also be, the, indeed, the kin of the god Chaos. He was the first Greek god and also one of the most powerful. They are also both Cyclopses, so it's entirely possible. Let's get some space between the Chaos Kin and us, have it dash toward us so we can trap it in the Electro Trap, and let's finish it off! Now that was a reign of death. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pit, I'm so relieved you're okay. Oh no. Pitzo! Veridi, I need to fly! You already used the power of flight. Don't you remember? 
remember? If I enable it again now, your wings will catch fire! The Chaos Cane is going to destroy the two! Can't you see what's at stake here? I don't care if my wings catch fire! No way! Just forget about it! I'm pulling you out! No! Stop! If we don't help him right now, we won't have another chance! I'm begging you, Veridi! Let me fly! Now! <sighs> Fine! But whatever happens to you isn't my fault! How's Pit? Pit... Pit's in bad shape. He can't fly. He's barely breathing. Palatina? What are you doing? My wish would be to fly by myself. I I'll return to Sky World victorious! Oh, Pit.